So the tracker took its cameras outside. We are the Swiss Spirit Alisa Hotel. Um, the hotel is fully open for business now with all COVID-19 protocol in check. So you can come out here with your friends, your family, enjoy the ambience, enjoy good food, and have a great time out here. My guest today on the show is a special one. He has been all over Europe uh, applying his trade. Um, he's also uh, played for the Black Stars at the World Cup. He's seen it all as far as the professional game is concerned. Today, we'll be talking to him about his story and his journey. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest and then we'll get the conversation on the road. So Lee Adi is our guest on the tracker today. Lee, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Now, the first thing I think about when I think about Lee Adi is, where from the name Lee Adi? First time I heard your, your name, I thought you were Japanese or something of the sort. I mean, g give us an origin to where that name has come from. Uh, thank you very much. I'll use this opportunity to uh I say thank you to the Almighty God and then say uh, I'm so grateful for the people who pay, like, uh, who help us to come to the nation, our motherland Ghana, the GFA, PLB, and everybody, and the entire nation. Yeah. The name Liadi, I think, uh, I used to be called uh, Kalilu Dramani. That's Kalilu. your real name? My name is Li, uh, Kali. Okay. But the pe people used to call me Kalilu, Kalilu Draman because I used to play, play like uh, Kalilu Draman, the former uh, defender of Asante Kotoko. Mm. But the people who can call Kalilu always call me Lee, 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 and it stacks. Like in the, even in the house, they always call me Lee. Lee. Wow. But the, the people who know me very well call me Kali or Kalilu. Mm. And uh, we are about to travel. I think nine years time we are about to travel and. Uh, the team manager doesn't know my real name. He only knows me, Lee. Mm -hmm. So they ask then coach the uh, Prince, coach Prince, yeah. Prince Owusu. And he says, okay, I know his surname is Adi, but I don't know his real name. We always call him Lee, Lee, Lee. So let's put Lee Adi, then that's okay. So And the name stuck? The name stuck. I, I, sometimes I thank God for giving me that name or for changing the name from Kali to Lee. Because Why? Uh, a lot of people ask who is Lee or who is Lee, do I know Lee? Mm -hmm. But the time they got to know that this is Kalilu we are talking about, I'm wherever I am. So you think that sometimes the sort of name you have also plays a role in people recognizing you easily? S sometimes if God wants to do something in your life, he always he can change your name to raise you to another level. <laughs> Interesting. Um, let's, let's begin off by talking a little bit about your football beginnings or even your general life beginnings? Where, where were you born? Where have you grown up? Uh, that's a great question. I was born at, uh, uh, I was born in bred in Accra, part of Accra called Tesano, behind the police station. Okay. That, that was the place I was born and bred. And uh, I started school at police depot and hmm. it continues. Interesting. <laughs> now, tell me about football. Who introduced you to football? And what were your early days in football like? I would say it's something which is in the blood. Uh, my late mother was an athlete. And I have an uncle who, who knows how to play football. They are very talented, uh, let me say, uncles or brothers. And even my senior brother is, is, is also a footballer. Okay. All my brothers are footballers, but they just uh, stop on the way. I always look after my elder brother. Uh, I, I once told him that I want to play like you, mm. but you know, they say many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. Maybe he did not have that luck to, like yes, sir, but he's a great player. I, I respect him for that, and I, I learned a lot, of, a lot of things from him. So you literally come from, if I can say, a sports family. Yeah. How, how, how much influence did your mother have on you in terms of trying to get you to also be competitive as a sports person. How did she play an active role? Uh, I think she, she, she's, she's everything. I think I, 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 I lost my, my father early age. Okay. So it's my mother who took uh, care of us. We have uh, four boys, one girl. Okay. And uh, he, she did everything possible for us to reach wherever we want to be because he, she asked, what do you want to do in the future? And she knows, I think she has a belief that one of his sons will be uh, a superstar. So she did everything possible. I remember she sold the uh, only cloth 
cloth to buy me a pair of shoes to play. Mm. And uh, she always tells me that I just want to see you on television. I just want to see yeah. you playing on the television. That's all. That's wo all what I want. So I remember uh, 2010 when we were playing the first, like the Nations Cup. Yeah. Then she was late. I, I, my first game against Burkina Faso. Yeah. I, I think in, we came to line up and they were playing the national anthem. So I raised my head up. And uh, I can see her picture up there smiling. Wow. Some people share tears, but I was, I was weeping in me. That, that is what my late mother want me to, that, this is where he want me, or she want me to be. Yeah. And I thank God I'm there. And there's nothing I can do than to, uh, like, to thank God and, and, and pray, for, uh, pray for his social rest and peace. That's all I can do. But you see, that's life and that's, uh, it has happened already. I can't do anything about it. Talk to me about codes. Were you part of the code system or the academy system when you were coming up? And what teams did you play for that helped you to form your foundation as a footballer? Uh, that's, that's, that's a great question. I played codes. Uh, I started playing with Jawara babies. And uh, I started from under 10. 12 to 17. I think from 12 to 17, I, I, I tried going to BT. I played with BT for a couple of months, okay. but uh, the deal did not succeed. So I came back to Jawara and uh, I went to uh, Noble Harrison. Okay. I think the time I was uh, graduating to under 17, mm -hmm. then there is, a, uh, there is this uh, ruse which okay. came that if you have played under 17 for three or four years, mm -hmm. you can't continue anymore. So the people have to go for us to come. That, is, yeah. that, that was my year. And uh, I thank God that in that year, I saw very, very well. Our seniors are uh, Sabina Pierce and stuff. We have a friend, yeah. Dorman, who is now coaching yeah. Uh, yeah. Dreams FC. They are our seniors in, our, mm -hmm. in my team, Jawara. He's one of the best in the coast then. Yeah. Then they were, uh, they were sh uh, rocking shoulders with Stevie and Pierce Dems and Mighty Victory and uh, Noble Harrison. Mm. Interesting. Um, tell me about that part. Codes versus academy, right? I'm sure there were academies then at the time when you were also coming up. What do you make of the fact that some people say that the code system is a little outmoded and that academies are more progressive now with regards to providing you with some bit of education, providing you with some bit of character development, as opposed to codes where you don't even camp in the place, but you run your daily activities and then come and play football at the end of the day. I mean, if, if, if you had your own way, would you collapse the code system in favor of the academy system, or you think that both of them can both help contribute to the game? Uh, it's a dicey question. Uh, I passed through course and uh, I know what is going on. And I, I have tasted course. I have not tasted the academy. Mm. Then it was uh, uh, golfers. Okay. Uh, Ashanti golfers, they have yeah. academy. And Ayas. Ayas also has academy. But it, it, it's not common. Mm. And if you are going to academy, I think you will not find it easy, but now it's easy. And uh, the coast, I think it, the people who, are, who have never played coast, mm -hmm. when they are playing, you can see the difference. Mm. There's difference between academy football and coast football. There's difference between African football and European football. Uh, European football, they've taught you what to do. Yeah. So it's like a computer. But uh, African football, it's naturally what God has given it to you. That's what you are exhibiting. Yeah. In Africa, they don't, they don't teach us how to control, how to kick, and how to do m much things. But uh, the blessings God has given to us, mm -hmm. we can easily do it. It's a gift, it's a talent which we, we did not learn, we did not buy it, but we are, like God gave it to us naturally. Mm. That, is, that is the difference between academy and coast. And you can't collapse, you can't collapse coast. Yeah. If you collapse coast, then you are collapsing your football. Because we, we get all these trophies from coast. Uh, yeah. The under 17, Audi, Sakas yeah. and stuff, they all came from coast. 
And uh, I think if we do it very well, uh, we can reach somewhere. But you can collapse where your, let me say, the building your, your father has built mm -hmm. or the foundation your father has laid for you. You say, yeah. no, it's not good. I want to break it and go and build another. Do you know, do you know uh, I don't know how to put the word, but the people who started the coast, mm -hmm. uh, they are there. A lot of them are yeah. there. The people who are handling now, they should match together. And then I think uh, share ideas, they can raise it up. I think it's the best academy is there. Uh, you, you ask a question, course, academy, academy, you, they, they will, you go to school, there's education, but yeah. then you can go to school and come to training when you are playing a uh, course. Mm -hmm. You can go to school in the morning, you come so, to training in the evening. So, so I think uh, there's no difference. The difference is you are camping together. But yeah. it's all it's, it's the same. And second thing is the academy, they taught you what to do. Yeah. Because you know when the ball is coming from here, definitely 90% you have to go here. Yeah. If you change direction, then that means you, you have to make it very well. But academy, uh, course football, mm -hmm. it's all play all. Show me your talent, what yeah. God has given yeah. to you. So it's, it's, it's quite different it's than... It's tough, it's competitive. Uh, yes. I, 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 I remember one game... Uh, uh, Noble Harrison and uh, Mighty Victory. Mm. I will never forget that game. At the Harrison Park? Yes. And I remember one game, uh, Mighty Victory against my former team, Jawara Babies, at mm -hmm. uh, Apenkwa. It, 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 it was wonderful. You can see Steven appear here, mm -hmm. and you can see with friend Dormon here. Wow. But you see, there are a lot of... Uh, there's a say that many are called but few are chosen. That's true. Maybe Sylvia Pia was, was lucky to move and move because he was doing very, very well. I like that last statement. He said many are called but few are chosen. Yes. I always say that it isn't the most talented players that make it out of the country into Europe. Yeah. Sometimes it's somebody's, I would say, network that leads you to an agent or a helper who gets you out of the country. For you, I know you played for FC Nanya at a point. Yeah. Um, when did you decide, or when did the opportunity come for you to make that jump from playing on the local scene to going outside the country? Uh, I always say this: uh, playing for like then I was playing for FC Nanya, yeah. and we once played with Accra or Suffolk. Okay. We beat them one zero at uh, Legon. I came home and I was telling my other brothers that I, at the Premier League, I can play. Mm. They used to well, call us. Was it a league match? No, it's a friendly game. Oh, it's a friendly game. They, 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 they used to call us on, uh, uh, they used to call us for the national team. I think under 20, uh, under 17, and uh, 23. But all what they used to tell us is, you are not a Premier team, like a Premier player. So we can't drop a Premier player and take you. Sometimes there are questions, they will ask you questions. Yeah. So they prefer Premier Play because they believe that they, believe that they have experience to play. So I, I, I told my elder brother that, oh, I can play the Premier League. What they are playing, I can play better. Yeah. Because I've, I've tested with the crowds of folk and then I've watched a couple of matches, yeah. I can play. My brother said, no, you just travel outside and then things will be better. I said, no, bro. Let me let me test the, let me test the league and see. Is it okay? So which team are you going? Because first I went to a class of work, mm -hmm. Tom Yokai, and uh, he said I should come and play. But uh, I can't come and work uh, without not eating. Mm. So how to folk wanted you to play for free at the time? Uh, they because you are the one who was chasing the opportunity. Yes, and I went to Kotoko. Uh, they said they they don't like uh, second division player. Kotoko is big, it's too big. They can't take second division players. So I I forgotten the then the chairman. In the room I told him that I'm I'm leaving. I'm not being like it's not I'm not being disrespectful, but you look for me, you will never get me. Wow. I I, I the people who were there, I think uh, they, uh, our former my former coach, Ano Walker, coach Ano Walker yeah. took me to Kotoko. We sat down. If he, he can, if he's hearing me or he's watching I'm this, I'm sure you definitely watch this. 
I will remember this statement. I told them that I'm going, mm. but they will look for me. They will never get me. Then I came home. And uh, opportunity came for me to go to Brecom Chelsea. It was another challenge for me too. But I told my elder brothers that no, I have to go. Because uh, anywhere you exhibit the great talent God gave it to you, you always, you, you will sell. People will see you. It doesn't matter. If you are good, yeah. you will sell. So I took that challenge. I went to Chelsea. And there's a lot of story going to Chelsea. Even going to Mr. Chairman's house, Mr. Chairman accepting me to go and play a mm -hmm. game at is, is, is something else. That's why from the beginning I told you that God can change your name to raise you to another level. Because I went to Mr. Chairman's house and uh, I met him and his other brother mm -hmm. and one guy called Great Coco. I think he's well known in uh, Ghana football. Yeah. Great Coco and Mr. Chairman's uh, senior brother condemn me because they look at me and they think, no, I can't play. So they told me in front of everybody, like in front of Mr. Chairman, everybody, because it was one guy who was introducing me to yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman. He said, "Hey, they were coming from Division One at the time." Yes, that's their first uh, season. Yeah. I was so embarrassed. But what helped me was one, two angels. I call those boys angels. Mm. Because the ones came to FC Nanya for a trust, they did not succeed. But I was very good to them. I was encouraging them that you can play, not knowing they were managed by the senior brother of uh, Mr. Chairman. So they were there when the guy was talking to me that way. After them, Mr. Chairman sent us to go and pick something at the backyard, and we went. Then the two boys would walk to them and say, this guy is one of the best defenders I have ever seen. That was, that was what convinced Mr. Chairman. Mm. So I called those boys my angel. I don't know what touched their heart. They can, they can, they can decide that, to keep That fighting. word made a difference in you being accepted as yes. a Premier League player. Then Mr. Chairman said, okay, if you believe you can play. We had a match in, in Sunyani. Yeah. Just go play mm -hmm. if the coach says you're okay yeah no problem interesting interesting now let's stay with the local league for a bit you have been around the world we'll definitely talk about your time in europe but tell me about what it feels like to come back to you to, to ghana when you want to play again and um there's a lot of opposition for instance i've heard things like clubs feel as if you guys who have been with the black stars been to Europe are expensive to acquire even when you come back and you want to relaunch your career how do you feel about that particular situation should should teams down here be more open and more welcoming to players who have real who have come back from Europe to relaunch? because a guy like Patao Dada has been around he's come back he's playing with Legon cities now what should be the attitude of teams generally to players like yourself that's a great question. And uh, I always say that if you look at what people are doing, you can do better than what they are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at South Americans, they always go to Europe, make it, come to their country, and then play again. Yeah. I believe uh, Ghana, we are not a poor country. And uh, we have to start from somewhere before we get to somewhere. Mm. And if we don't start, or if we don't take a step, yeah. how can we progress? There's always a say that uh, if you don't have an elderly person in your house or around you, mm -hmm. you, like, you will not gain experience because mm -hmm. you have to go and come and ask your elderly person that this is what happened. And he will give you because he has been, he have been yeah. there before. We will learn from the senior guys. I believe the time I was playing uh, local league, I'm local champion because I took the best, I took best, defenders, best defender for two times continuous. But I went to the national team, travel. I said, I see that I saw that it was different ball game altogether. Playing African Cup mm -hmm. and a, a World Cup, yeah, it's not the same competition. Seriously, I'm telling yeah. you, playing, uh, playing, uh, let me say, UEFA yeah. and uh, Champions League. Mm -hmm. UEFA Cup and Champions League is different tournament. Mm -hmm. 
Champions League and UEFA. UEFA, when you miss the ball yeah. at the center, mm -hmm. it's 50, 60 percent goal. But Champions League, when you miss, you miss the ball in the middle, it's 99 percent goal. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, it, 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 it takes experienced people who will tell you this. Yeah. Because I've worked with a lot of uh, coaches. I've played a lot of tournaments. I've played a lot of. I've played all the the leagues, or all let me say the cups. Yeah. And I know what I'm telling you. My, one of my coach will tell you that two nil is better than three nil. Three nil is better than four nil. So mm. if you are losing, yeah. don't concede more goals. But try to sustain it and try maybe you can score or you can hold to that uh, mm. that goal margin. Having acquired the pedigree you've acquired now, are you willing to sign with the Ghana Premier League team? If the door open, my me for me my door is my doors are open. Anyone who comes to my door is, is always welcome. I open my door and embrace any contract he will bring. Uh, I believe that I will be I will be very very happy to be part of people who make history. I have made history, left the country. I'll be very happy to be part of the people who make another history in any club in Ghana. But you said that Accra Hearts of Folk and Asante Kotoko shut the door on you when you needed them the most. Are you still open to those two teams? It doesn't mean that if somebody has done you wrong, you're supposed to repay him with bad or wrong. I prove to them that I'm the best. Then, mm. Mm. I will not say up to now I'm the best. Then, I was the best. Not the best amount because everybody doesn't know how to play. But I proved yeah. to them that I'm on top form yeah. and I deserve to be in their team. But they made a mistake not mm. to. Mm. From where you sit, if you could make one input into local football or the league itself, what, what would that input be? Uh, I would be, be very happy to lead a club in Ghana uh, to the highest state. Let me say, I'll, I'll join Accra of Oak, I'll join Ajiko or Kotoko for the young ones to learn from me because uh, I have acquired a lot. I have learned a lot. I've learned how to lead, how to, I think, if the game is going on. I remember one game in uh, Zambia. Yeah. We were drawing, I think, remaining five minutes to go. Mm -hmm. But if I look at my striker, yeah. And their defender, their defenders are tired. Mm -hmm. So I told my striker that, you know, don't come, just stay there. Yeah. What we will do is we will absorb the pressure. Yeah. And as soon as we get the ball, we'll kick the ball for you. Run with them and just turn, look at the people who are coming. So I told one, one midfielder that if I kick the ball, mm -hmm. try and follow the striker. After the game, we won 2-0. Within five minutes, we won two zero. So after the game, the guys came to me and said, "No, we are we are we are we are blessed to have you yeah. in our midst. Not that I'm superior, but you're supposed to have a, somebody who can read read the game on the field of play. Mm -hmm. It's not outside. It's yeah. you have to have somebody on the field of play. So it's it it's count a lot. Me going to the national team. I remember me going to the national team playing my first tournament. That was Angola." We were messed with the senior guys, yeah. and it was wonderful. People thought we couldn't, we cannot do it. But if you are messed with the senior guys, I think uh, you can do it. The younger ones will run, but the senior ones will use their experience yeah. to, cre to create the magic or to do the magic for you. But you can't take all senior, and you can't take all junior. Mm. Sometimes you will lack something. So you have to blend with them mm. and make your team solid. Let's stay with the national team since you've opened the national team door. <laughs> yeah. um, can 2010, that was your first AFCON, I believe, yeah, yeah. as a player. What's the feeling like when, when you get invited to a competition like that first of all? And how is it like even when you first land, let's say, in Angola as a team, coming to play a tournament? Just talk us through some of those moments that we don't get to experience from the outside. Uh, let me say it's like uh, a dream comes true because that is all uh, I'm crying for, all what I'm working for. But I believe in me, I believe one day mm -hmm. I'll travel outside. Yeah. I believe one day I'll be a great person. Mm. But uh, to represent your 
or let me say your country yeah. is something else. I was very, very happy when I had they've called me for the local blaster and even called me for the national team. It was amazing. I know I'm doing well, but I was I was I thought it will it will hold on a little bit. But if God says this is your time, and I always say this, anyone they'll call you to national team, that is your time. Make good use of it. Mm. Mm. Anything you are doing, just pray to God that God, this is a great opportunity for me to exhibit what you have given me, the talent you've given me. I don't have to waste it. Yeah. So you have to be more prayerful, have to hard work, respect yeah. and focus. Mm. I think with all, with these things you can make it. But uh, some of the guys think uh, when they call you that is all and uh, they go there and things go down. And uh, I don't think it's, uh, I will be very happy or somebody will be very happy that you've seen his brother going there and coming down. You have to be happy for your brother going there, staying there for a while, because you can't be there for the rest of your life. For staying there for a while to make your name, leave it for somebody to come and uh, make his name. Uh, coming back to the question, I was very, very happy. I can't express this. Uh, I believe that having your first child or your, your first child, yeah. you can't express the feelings. I was like, I was shocked. I was called by one of my friends. Lee, my team with you. You have a national team. What do you do? You have a national team. You see, I never bore. You know, then I started making calls. Calls started coming. And I, I think it was uh, It was a proud moment for you. Proud, as a, I don't as know as what to do, but after everything, I went to the room and prayed that this is what I'm looking for. God, let me, uh, uh, like, strengthen me, guide me through this task, because it's another task altogether. Mm. Uh, calling you is another task, but uh, going there too is, is not easy. Hmm. Hold your horses there for a bit. We'll be unpacking the Black Stars issues <laughs> one after the other. You hear Lee Adi, he's just giving us an intro into his time with the Black Stars. We'll take a quick break here on the tracker. When we come back, we'll get into the Black Stars issues in there. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are speaking to Black Stars defender Lee Adi. Now, Lee, we are talking about the 2010 AFCON. This is one AFCON a lot of Ghanaians will remember because we were we were that close, and then Ghetto came on and dashed Ghanaian hopes. Um, why do you feel personally that we lost that AFCON? Uh, it was something which I I can I can express it. I was I thought I had it. Because nobody you thought we were going to win. It. Yes, for me, I thought uh, we were going to win because nobody expected us to reach even a quarterfinal. But we got to the finals. But the one thing I always say that we Ghanaians uh, we are blessed with talent. Mm. Sometimes you see us smallish, but uh, when we go to the field, we all, we suddenly change. I don't know why, but I think we were blessed. We are. We, I thank God for that. The game, when the game started, I told only that. I told him in Ghana, I was we we, we yeah. speaking Ghana. Many of my name Banya Mel they thought they can beat us. But what and what they gave me she walk on. You see, then uh, I think along the game with the time the game was going on, mm -hmm. we, we 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 outplayed them. Yeah. And uh, their striker. Uh, I forgot his name. Their striker. He was talking to me. On the field, they say game is not fair. You will win this game. Mm. We thought we have, we thought we will win you. You see, the Arab English was yeah. not all that clear. We thought we will win you, six goals. Yeah. But the game is not fair. You will win the game because then we were mounting pressure on them. Their goalkeeper was going down, mm. faking injuries and stuff, and yeah. it was fire out. And uh, Olele came to me and he told me in Ghana that. Yeah. We haven't finished, so we finish. We have to win and we have to score. Hmm. You see? And so after everything, we lost. We made a little bit of mistake. We lost. And uh, I came home and I'm, I'm talking to myself. I always, after every game or after every turn, I've, I always assess myself, uh, ask questions, and I'll answer them myself. Or I'll go to places, ask questions. And I, I, I ask questions that, does senior players count in game? Is it true or false? They do. Definitely they count. Then uh, the answer come, came that it counts. 
because having Olili there, mm -hmm. having Matiamwa there, mm -hmm. having Aminu Dramani there, yeah. having uh, Ericardo there, even 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 as a defender, if you are going for a ball and you heard your senior man shouting at you that you should go, you will go, mm. because you you believe in him. Yeah. And you know he had experience. You know where he is sending you. He's not sending you to wherever you disgrace yourself. But he's sending you to save a situation. But if I have my colleague, let me say, normal colleague, we all start from, and he, he, he's shouting on me. Uh, how would I take it? Uh, my friend, are they? But a senior guy, you know, no matter how he will shout, you have to come down, listen to him. You see, there's, there's this one different thing we... And the football is that no matter how you do, a senior guy will shout on you because he wants the best out of you. Yeah. That's why he shouts. He's not shouting you just for you to make a mistake, but he's shouting you to put this strength in you yeah. to make it more. I always had a, uh, a conversation with people that the time you were playing national team, Olele used to shout on you, she used to kill your moral. I always tell them that those things doesn't do anything to me because I've passed through all these things the time I was in Nanya. When you are playing with Abedi, or you are playing for Abedi Pele, yeah. ah, Abedi Pele, he is a genius, I'm telling you. Mm. Maestro Abedi Pele, he is a genius. Mm. Sometimes, there's a say that you don't value what you have till you lose it. The time we were playing national in Nanania, mm -hmm. he taught us everything in football. Everything, if you travel outside, where well, you will go and meet in, uh, you, when you go and meet outside, yeah. he taught us. That you know, you, are, you don't have your mother, you don't have your father, you don't have anybody there. Yeah. This is what they are going. They are going to maltreat you. They are going to frustrate you. They will shout at you. They will yell. They will do everything. Yeah. But you have to fight hard. You have to run. Mm. Mm. You have to work uh, uh, ten times than uh, the citizen yeah. before they will be satisfied. Otherwise, they will bring you back. Mm. So I passed through. I have I have passed through all these things. So. Shouting and this thing, insulting will not do anything to me. Yeah. The time I went to the national, like the Premier League, mm -hmm. people sh screaming, kotoko, you see me smiling. I've made up my mind already because your shouting and your insult will not come on the field. But what will prove me or mm -hmm. what, me, what will make me respond to you yeah. is my action on the field. It's my action to, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to play. To play very very well yeah. for everybody to be happy even you you'll be happy you the person who yeah. are insulting me yeah. i'll prove you wrong that i i, I know how to play hmm. do you feel as if the absence of guys like montari sn um john mensa contributed to our inability to break down egypt because like you yourself mentioned it's a game that ghana dominated it's a game that ghana created chances but we just lack that little something to get over the line. Did they contribute to that? Uh, I will not say yes or no. Because if they are there, maybe, maybe they will do something. And uh, we were there, they were not there, we lost. They can be there, we will lose. And they are not there, we lost. But I will say uh, we did not have a luck. Mm. Because uh, you can, you can, you, nobody believes German will score Brazil with those squad, I think six or seven goes to zero. So anything can happen, football, anything True. can happen. True. But if you have these quality players, definitely they can do something. Mm. Mm. But I will not say if they are there, we will not lose. We can lose, we can win. Anything can happen. But uh, my belief tells me that seniority counts. And uh, any team you will do, any team, any club will do, you're supposed to find three or four senior players to fit in. Defense, midfield, striker, or super sub. Yeah. Sometimes to change the game, it helps a lot. We've still not won an Afcon. We went to a final in 2015. I watched that final in this very premises where we are having this interview. Okay. Um, it was it was heartbreak because we lost on penalties. First question: Do we have a fear of penalties? as a nation and as players of the Black Stars, do you have fear when a game is heading towards penalties? <sighs> uh, this uh, penalty issues have, have popped, uh, like I've raised something, I've rang a bell. 2010, this World Cup we went to, mm -hmm. 
uh, as a margin's penalty and uh, we being we afraid of penalties and stuff. No, we are not afraid of penalties. There are a lot of people who are expecting penalties. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we train in the national team, we, we always use to play uh, penalty shootout. And uh, we come out with best one or best two, best three. Who we know that when it's penalty, these are the people who are going to play. Yeah. So I don't think uh, we have something called fear in penalties. Mm -hmm. Just that we have to have confidence in us that, hey, he's going to score. When you miss, you miss. When you score, you score. But you're supposed to have confidence. I believe as a manager have this, he missed first one. And he went to second like one. To score he the score. So that tells you that he knows how to, score, how to play. Just that he did not have that luck or he put a little bit of power. He thought that is done because he's perfect. So it doesn't mean that uh, we are afraid. We are not afraid. And uh, time will come, things will change. So wait, do you believe that penalty playing is a science or it's luck? Because there are people who say that, for instance, right, in, in Europe, there are teams that will spend time investigating on the other team or covering scouting reports, say this goalkeeper doesn't feel comfortable diving to his left or he always goes to his right. They do all kinds of little, little scientific research to back their penalties. Does Leadi believe that penalties are down to lack or it's a science that we need to learn? Uh, I don't believe it's luck. It's not luck. Uh, it's your decision. It's your decision which will make you, make you win. Sometimes you know how to play, but where to put the ball? Mm. If you make correct decision and you kick the ball very well, you score. It doesn't, it doesn't, whether you have, like, you can have a thousand, like, if you hit it, the goalkeeper will catch you. You have to hit it well. Yeah. Tell me you have luck, just push the ball this way, that it will score. It will not score. You have to hit it hard. You have to aim a direction and hit it. Mm. Tell me about how you feel about this current national team. CK Akono is now at the helm of affairs. Um, having played in the national team yourself, you played under foreign managers. Now we have a local manager in charge. As, a, as somebody who's played on the local terrain, what are three things? Give me three things you, you would want to see a local manager do for the Black Stars. Uh, a local uh, manager have uh, won the cup with the national team before. Yep. We are capable of doing it. And we can do it and we will do it. Uh, the only thing I will say is the criteria or the criteria he mm -hmm. will choose to select his place, mm -hmm. it shouldn't favor anybody. Mm. It should not say that, okay, this is my friend, or this is uh, this guy, I know this guy, so when he's bringing this player, I have to consider. No consideration. You are professional, you know the kind of people, you does know it, the. Does that happen? It happens everywhere. Even in this hotel, it has happened. It will happen everywhere, but I th I, there's a say that only the strong survive. You have to make a bold decision. Mm. I have a story about it. And uh, it, it's something else, even, even if Olele is watching me here, Olele came to me and said that, hey, the God you're serving, mm -hmm. continue serving the same God, because somebody has made a huge decision about you. Wow. wow. You have to be strong. Mm. Believe in the kind, of, the kind of group you are going with. Yeah. Back them, and you succeed. But don't say that, okay, you are my friend, you mm -hmm. have a player, okay, let me consider your player. No. You are professional. Yeah. You are into the game. Mm -hmm. You train the guys for so long and you know the kind of people you are, you are dealing with. Yeah. If this guy can perform today, mm -hmm. you know when you bring this guy, he can do, I think, 50 or 60% yeah. of your job. Yeah. But don't say, okay, he can, because this one can do 50, you are pushing him out to favor somebody. No. Mm -hmm. If the senior guy can play, put the junior one there. Let the junior one play. If the junior one is now up to that level yeah. or he can't play, put the junior one. Don't favor, don't, no, just let the right person play who mm -hmm. win trophy. I'm not saying that previous people did not put the right people there or did not put our favoring people. That mm -hmm. This is my point of view and this is what I know if, I believe if uh, the local coaches do, they, uh, they will exactly. succeed. Because, you see these European guys or the people like the guys which have been in Europe for a long time. Mm -hmm. They adopt this system that if I, I deserve to play and uh, I don't play, it seems like it brings the person down a little bit. No. If I, he deserves to play, let him play. Mm. Or if you don't want him to play, 
go to him, talk to him. Yeah. Sometimes the local coaches, if they don't want you to play, they don't talk to you. And that is killing us. A That's white it. coach, if he doesn't, if he will not, if he will not allow you to start, mm -hmm. he will come to you. That is the that I believe, and I know that is what killed uh, Stephen Apia. He was expecting. I I, mean, I don't know what I don't know why if I don't know if they talked to him or they did not talk to him. But I believe that if they go if they go to him, uh, mm -hmm. if they, like, they should have like talked to him personally. That this 2010 World Cup, we are trying to push this guy. You be you. You, like you become an substitute, you, like he will not retire early. He believe he can start. He believe uh, this is the time for him to play very well, for him yeah. to have another uh, contract. Why are you putting me out? I can read from his face that he is not happy. He is not very very happy man. But because he is the captain, mm -hmm. he have to he have to suck all this pressure. But I believe if they talk to him and they talk to him very very well, he will come down. But I respect him for that because he is a great man. You've just opened up another chapter we need to enter into right now. Now, in the last AFCON, we had a situation like that. A situation that had to do with communication. Because basically, Kwesi Apia wanted to remove Asamoah Jan as his captain and put Andrea Yu in there as his captain. And that decision ended up not sitting too well with Jan, who was a substantive captain. Now, I, when I spoke to Akamenko, he says that Ghana lost that AFCON before we even got on the plane to go to the competition because the team was already split and there was already bad blood. Do you feel as if one um, captaincy needs to be an issue where there are there's some, we say that this guy has his people, this guy has his people. Um, if you make this guy captain, you are breaking the team. Do you feel as if we need to take a proper stance with that particular matter, decide who is captain and move with it? And uh, secondly, do you also feel as if we made a mistake by removing Jan as captain for that competition? I've answered your question. This question, I've just answered it right now. <laughs> you have to be strong. Mm. You have to know the decision you are taking. Yeah. You know the kind of people you are working with. Mm -hmm. You know their character. You know them. So you don't make any decision to bring a confusion in them. Football is a unity. Football is love. Football is togetherness. Yeah. The national team, we don't have anything. We only have unity. We only have love. I remember the first time, like the first year I started playing the national team. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man called me and told me that, but he said, I'm going to go to the national team because the men who national team, they are my club side. The happiness, the joy, your friendship, everything you had, you will not get it. So if you are coming to the national team and splitting these boys, what do you think will happen? Did you talk about did you did you talk about the decision you are coming to make? It, it, the, your, this question, I've answered it all. You have to be bold. Hmm. The spirit and everything will not kick the ball for you. You have to kick the ball. If they say they will they will go in terms of ahead. Uh, do do and stuff like Benin. This they, 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 they should they have won multiple work tournaments by now. In the, they, but those things is your mind. Mm. There, are, there, are, there, are, there are areas which you said okay, these things will work. There, but football, when yeah. you kick it, it will go. Hmm. If you kick the ball, it will go. You can say okay, then we will go to the spiritual. We will not train. We'll let's sit down. When the time comes, then go and play. Who will win? The people who are training, they will win. So you heard the Adi there, played for Red Star Belgrade, played for Dinamo Zagreb, Black Stars defender featured in the World Cup. He's done it all, he's seen it all. And these are the stories that we tell on the tracker. Same time next week, we'll be back here.